Without further ado, uh, Marissa Morgillo uh, uh, with LinkedIn 101. Marissa, take it away. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alex. And I'm so excited to be here again. Well, remotely for the Miller Business Resource Center, but I really enjoyed doing this presentation last time. And I hope that whoever is joined us today also gets something out of this and some essential tips. So as Alex mentioned, my name is Marissa Morgillo and I am the Director of Marketing for Barrett Bonacci and Van Wheel PC. We are a civil engineering and land surveying firm located in Hophog. I'm also an independent marketing consultant where I work with various few different businesses on Long Island. And I am here today to talk about LinkedIn 101 and growing your business with effective strategy. Um, this course is going to cover just some of the basic organic steps into growth. So um, I'm not including paid advertising or any sort of paid growth today. It's all organic, but there will be a second course eventually to talk about the paid. So anyway, here we go. Okay, so welcome to LinkedIn. I think one of the first things it's important to understand is how powerful LinkedIn is as a tool. Now, LinkedIn is definitely up there with your other social media platforms, but what sets it aside is the professionalism of this platform. And it is definitely the world's largest professional platform that there is. So in one way or the other, your clients are going to be out there and you are able to connect with them. So right when you start in with LinkedIn, your first quote that you see on the homepage is that, welcome to LinkedIn. We're the world's largest professional network with nearly 660 million users in more than 200 countries and territories worldwide. So that statement alone is extremely powerful. And whether you're selling a service, whether you're selling a product, your B2C, B2B, your customers are there. And it's about taking the steps to make sure that you're reaching them and that you're engaging with them and you're getting the fullest amount of your LinkedIn profile. So LinkedIn is about who you know, and it's about who your connections know. The wider you cast a net, the more people that you connect with that are relevant to you, it's all about then how those connections are connected to further people. And it's just spreading yourself as a whole connection database. So the more people that you engage with and the more people you connect with, the larger your audience is going to be and the more connections you are going to find that are vital to you and your business. So now that we understand what LinkedIn does for you, you need to start before you do anything and before you take any measures in life for any type of marketing plan, you need to set your goals before you begin. So on LinkedIn, you could accomplish many different things. You could build brand awareness, you could broaden your network, you could gain new clients, or you could be looking to hire new employees. But whatever it is that you are achieving, and you very well be trying to achieve all four of those things, and that's terrific and you're, for your business. But you have to define that audience first and understand who it is that you're going after. You're essentially speaking to your clientele. You're speaking to the people you'd like to. So you have to figure out who that person is that you are looking to speak to. So personally, I work for a land surveying and civil engineering firm. So my audience is typically property developers, attorneys, real estate brokers, and different commercial property managers. So that's who I'm literally focusing on every time that I go on LinkedIn. And that's who I'm trying to get when I'm working for my company's page. So it's important to really lay that out and understand where you and your firm want to be and where you want to go. So the first thing you have to do is we have to, you have to set up for success. And that really is going to begin with your business page. Now, I'm not sure how many people today do not have a business page. And people have asked me this over and over again, which is, do I need a business page? I have this great personal page that has so much traffic and I have a, I have a thousand connections and I'm doing so well. But the answer is always yes. If you are a brand, if you are a company, if you are a business, you absolutely need that business page. So there's many features that your business page could handle. 
that your personal page cannot and vice versa. So you can't even begin to start a business profile unless it's connected to a personal profile. So that alone just shows you that when you have a strong personal profile attached with your business profile, that is going to be a very strong, powerful duo for you and your business. Because again, they're very intertwined. So when you begin building out your personal, your business page, and you've connected it now to some personal page or someone within your firm that you felt comfortable enough to connect it to, you have to go in there and start building out your profile and the necessary information that it looks for. So keeping your page static is not the right thing to do. LinkedIn is very obvious with their algorithms and the more that you put into something, the more they push out your content and they push it out to a larger audience. So it's a living, breathing organism, your business page. And you certainly want to take the steps constantly to care for it and keep it updated and make sure that you're really putting in the right information. So before you even start with your information on the back end, as you can see at the top, I have these two pictures here for you guys to look at. And these are just some of the basic setups and information that LinkedIn is looking for for you to input into the back end. So it can start. You could put your company name and tagline. You could add custom buttons to the page. You want to absolutely put a description of your company, your website, your industry, the size. It gives you the opportunity to put up to 20 relevant specialties. You could put up to three hashtags, featured groups that you're part of, and then of course your logo and your cover image. So once you kind of set this all up for yourself so that you're branded, you're identified now, LinkedIn is actually going to unlock features for you that is gonna give you some better insights, you get better statistics, and you get to work with different things within there just by setting up a strong company profile. So I think this is absolutely the first step to your success is definitely making sure that all your information and everything is correct and take advantage of the specialties it asks you to input. Take advantage of the hashtags that it has you input. These are all better ways that you're going to expand and reach a wider audience. <clears throat> okay, so now you are set up for success. You've built this great company page that's intertwined with your personal page. And now you have to figure out how am I as a business going to attract an audience? How am I going to attract my potential customers and my outreach? <clears throat> and it's going to start with your content and your posting. So when you're doing your content and you're writing your content for your page, it could be a little tricky because you have to think to yourself, I am speaking to my audience. I am speaking to a customer that I would like to bring in or a customer that I'm currently working with and what are they interested in? So it's important that you understand the type of content that might interest your potential leads. So again, as I spoke about, LinkedIn has a very simple algorithm. It's not like Google where you have to figure it out all the time. The better your content and the higher quality and richness of it, LinkedIn is going to push your content out to more people and it's going to create a wider audience for you. So you want to make sure that your posts and your engagement, you're mixing it up. Have a little fun with it. I always say that, that yes, it's a professional network LinkedIn, but you're allowed to have a little bit of fun with it. It's still social. So people are still concerned with social aspects of your business. They want to see what your team members are doing. They want to see how many years someone's been working at your firm. So as you can see, these are just some of the posts that I've done for my firm. And I intertwine these over the course of the month with different types of articles and various, but I will reshare a, a project that we've done and I will go into the details of the project and a new development and construction site on Long Island. I'll highlight one of our team members who've been at the firm for 25 years and I'll recognize them. I will shoot a video because it's extremely important now that you mix up your videos and your photos because especially now during COVID-19, video is becoming so, so relevant and it's a huge trend and it's something that you absolutely need to start taking more initiative with. So if you mix that all together, you're really creating a, a nice 
resume almost on your company profile for yourself where people could go through and see the type of content you're posting and they start following you like this if you are of interest and you're sharing things that are of interest to them. And putting this all together is definitely a nice mix. So definitely don't always post the same thing. Don't always write the same thing and get a little creative, have some fun with it. And you'll be surprised how quickly some of those, those posts will actually spread when you do put a little creativity and fun into it. So just like as you would not go up to somebody in real life, and I'm sorry if someone does do this because you might, but you're probably not gonna go up to somebody that you're trying to work with shake their hand and say, please work with me. And that's exactly the same thing you're going not to do on LinkedIn. You're not just going to post on LinkedIn and write, work with my company, we are the best firm on Long Island and we're the amazing work with us. That's not what people want to see on LinkedIn. They really would prefer to be subtly sold. And you could incorporate messages about your business, but by Go, doing what we just went over by mixing it up, the articles, the highlights, the new products, projects, new team members, that will all build the brand for itself where you don't have to go and just talk about how amazing you are and to buy from you. Because again, that's not what you're supposed to do. I do get asked quite a bit, how often should I post on LinkedIn? So there's really no right or wrong answer to that. If you have relevant, strong content that you want to share every single day, by all means, go ahead and post that relevant content. But if you're just sharing things to share it because you think you need to every day, you do not have to. A few times a week is usually the best, but again, you want the quality over the quantity. Okay, so I just wanna take a stop before we move forward is because obviously right now we have a world pandemic going on. And while things are not as hectic as they were a couple of months ago, I still felt it was important to share with you guys some tips of the content you're posting during COVID-19. So obviously right now, you might be deviating a little bit from your original marketing plan, which is okay. Because right now, it's about your customers and it's about their well-being and their support and your support for them. So like if you're now is not the time for certain industries to be pushing sales really heavily, but it's actually about building that long-term trust, letting your customer know that you're truly there for them during these times. It might be okay. You might, this might be the time to post more educating articles on your firm. Give a history of who you guys are, who the CEO is, who the founder is, let people know more about who you are rather than trying to sell them at this time. It's a balance right now between optimism and sensitivity. You want to be optimistic about the future because of course we're all business people and we all have to keep, keep it moving forward, but you also don't want to be insensitive to the fact that people have been going through some incredibly difficult times. So a very thin balance of that is what's encouraged right now. You want to show empathy. You want to show sympathy. And basically, if you have a problem, if there's a problem, there's tons of problems right now. If your firm has a solution to that, or if you have a solution, now's the time to post something like that. So <clears throat> basically, I gave you guys a couple of examples, which I liked, which is that Emerald Document Imaging, they uh, recently put out a guideline for restaurants because the states have been urging the restaurants that they have to use disposable menus upon this time. So Emerald came out with a whole post of showing people how they can use these printers internally and how the restaurants could use it during these times. Yes, they are selling, but they're also solving a problem. So that's what makes it the difference. For my company, sometimes I'll share an article. So the, although US economy is slowing, starting to slowly starting to come back, contractors shouldn't let their guard down. And it's just, again, just another touch and another article of what you can share during these times, because it is a little bit difficult to come up with certain content. So that was just to deviate, just to tell you a little bit during COVID-19, how to kind of handle it and what you should be posting. But again, you're just deviating slightly from your original marketing plan. So getting back to your content now, you have all this rich content that you wrote, you have this great company profile that you've set up, and now we get to the hashtag. So the hashtag is something that has become extremely relevant in today's world. 
the hashtag did not come out the same time for LinkedIn as it did Twitter and as it did Facebook. So it was definitely something that came out a little bit later on, but it is certainly relevant in LinkedIn world. So LinkedIn uses hashtags to spread and further push out your content. People could discover you faster with hashtags. It makes your content more discoverable by the people who are following those hashtags. So it is certainly important to use. I definitely think you should be using them, but you have to use them correctly in order for them to be appropriate and work for your content and for your business. So like I mentioned, you don't want to use the same hashtags that people on Facebook are using and that people on Twitter are using because a lot of times they aren't very appropriate and they're not very professional. So all your hashtags on LinkedIn should always be professional. A big mistake I see people do is they hashtag every single word. So if you're putting up a post, the word the, the word and, the word every, that is not what you want to do. You do not want to hashtag every single word because now LinkedIn is seeing a thousand different words that you've hashtagged and it's almost you've confused now LinkedIn as to what they should be posting and what they should be pushing. So you want to pick out your core words from your content that are the most relevant to your industry. So if I'm typing in something about Long Island construction and development, my hashtags are going to be development, land development, construction. It's taking away the key meat of that paragraph and you hashtag those words. So hashtags need proper punctuation. There's no commas, apostrophes, spaces, or exclamation points. They are single words, double words, triple words, but there are no exclamation points. And again, there is no punctuation in them. So you want to make sure you don't do that. And you want to find your niche of hash words. You, you could go into LinkedIn and you could go to the search bar and you could see what people are following in terms of the hashtag. You could search a hashtag and see how many people are following that hashtag. And that will give you a better insight of how many you should be including and the right keywords to be including into your content. And then you're able to follow them. So you, if you have ones that are relevant to your industry, you're going to want to follow those as well. And again, it's just going to bring it all together and it's just going to make things grow in an even bigger range. So let's bring the content together now. We have this great article that we wrote or we have this great paragraph that we wrote and we need to put the hashtags in. So where do they go? Um, a lot of people, you can embed them within the paragraph itself or you could put them below. I typically like to put them below my paragraph, but it's okay to mix them up and you could put them within it as well. And then as you're typing out your paragraph, as you could see on the bottom left-hand image that I have, as you're typing out your paragraph, LinkedIn is actually going to give you suggested tags. So I started typing new multifamily development on Long Island. LinkedIn already pre-generates for me multifamily development at the bottom and the word Long Island and the word new. Now I couldn't choose to include all those. I could choose not to, but they simplify it for you because they know that that might push it out further. And I absolutely recommend taking advantage of the pre-generated suggested hashtags that come to you. And again, it's definitely just only gonna make things grow. So there's a lot of tools and statistics that you could go into so that you could see a little bit more of what people are following, what your connections are following, and again, it will bring everything together. So now that we are attracting our audience, we've created our content and we have this rich content filled with hashtags and we are bringing the people to us. But sometimes that is not enough. And so you sometimes have to go out there and get your own clientele and you have to figure out how to reach those people that are relevant for you. And again, this would all come back to your plan that you created. But my set, this slide is I love is because I call this the schmoozing of your audience. <clears throat> now, again, as I mentioned before, one of the biggest takeaways that I want you guys to know is how important your profile, your personal profile is highly connected to your business profile. So your business profile page cannot like or comment on another business page, but your personal profile can. So you want to start with your personal profile and all your connections. You want to start following your target audience. 
figure out who it is that you're trying to reach, start following them, start connecting with them and inviting them to follow your page. So as you can see in the bottom right hand corner, once you're on your company profile, LinkedIn will actually generate for you on the right hand side, you can invite your connections to follow this page. So I could actually invite people. So if I connect now with a property developer that I was looking to connect with, and they've connected with me on my personal profile, I now can invite them on my company page to start following my company profile. So now they could start seeing all the projects that we're so involved with. And this is absolutely one of the strongest parts that you could do to really start showcasing who you are as a brand. Now, I just wanna give you guys a brief example because I've personally done so well with this. And I wanted to follow a property developer that was of interest to us that we had done some work with. I was looking to strengthen that relationship. I followed their LinkedIn company page. I connected with them individually. And then I started sharing some of their articles. So therefore, I actually then sent a message to their inbox. They reciprocated. We met up, we had lunch, and we are now extremely close friends. And we've done a ton of business together. And again, and that was all linked back to LinkedIn. We met through LinkedIn. So just as you can meet somebody at a networking event, you can meet them just as well on LinkedIn. You have your profiles and you know who you're looking to go after. And once you have that knowledge, you are looking to schmooze them. So I think that's really important that it's not just about you and your business. It's about how could I maybe enlighten someone else's business? How could I team with them on something to co-brand us? How can I make them feel good? And by doing all that, you're going to see that people are start going to follow you. They're going to reach out to you. Hey, thank you for sharing my article. Thank you for sharing something that we worked on. And you're going to see how it really will all come together and you're going to gain more connections and you're going to gain more meaningful relationships through all of this. Okay, so one of the, an, another organic method that I think seems to help with everything is bringing your team members together. So if you have a business and you have multiple people that work at your company, it's important to get them all excited to get on LinkedIn as well. Because when you go to someone's company page, you're able to see how many people work at that firm. Now your company might have 45 members, but only four of them are on LinkedIn. Now that doesn't look great to somebody who's trying to search for your company and know a little bit more about you. They want to see, oh, wow, maybe that's one of my project managers on the project. So I think it's really important that you try to encourage everybody to build their own personal profile. You can't enforce it, of course, as a business owner or anything like that, but you can, you can try to encourage them. And if there's someone who you trust enough and they're a bigger piece of your company, I would give them the admin rights to your company page because then your admin rights, now that they're connected, all the people that they're personally connected with now are now going to also, they have the opportunity to invite them to follow the page. Now it's just creating a bigger audience. So I definitely suggest if there's a few people at your firm that have more access and are willing to take on a little bit more of leadership with it, get them involved and let your other people build their own personal profiles. And it's also important that when you post something for your company and you're doing something for your firm, you want that engagement with them. It's nice when you see the people that you work with day in and day out following your page, when they comment on things. It's broadening to their networks. The engagement is literally pushing out to a further audience. So you want high engagement, you want high likes, and you want the people involved in your company to be involved with this page. I think that it absolutely will make a difference on reaching your potential network. So that's for that. So we have now talked about our organic steps and the organic methods to take to creating a larger audience and bringing in a wider range of people and really building your own business. So the last step today that I want to just talk about is using your statistics because you now you have your business page. You have this awesome content with beautiful hashtags. You're schmoozing your audience. You're reaching out to them. You're creating a wider range. You're leveraging your employees. 
And you want to know if it's all working because that's the biggest part of marketing and the biggest part of creating that marketing plan in the beginning is to know if it's working. So LinkedIn gives you many statistics that are absolutely wonderful for you to take advantage of. <clears throat> you're able to go in there and you're able to use your drop downs and you're able to see who's sharing your articles, how many followers you have, who those followers are. They've recently changed that, by the way. You, a few weeks ago, or maybe months ago, two months ago, you were not able to see who your followers were. You now could click into the follower where it says your 400 followers or whatever it is, and you are able to now see who all those people are. If these people are not relevant to you and these are not the right followers, then you know that you have to change your marketing plan and you know you're doing something that needs to be geared a little bit differently. But if you're noticing that these are all people within your industry, these are all people that you want to communicate with, then you're doing great. And then you are literally have created yourself a successful business page on LinkedIn and it has to keep going. You're able to see how many people are viewing you from your desktop versus your mobile device. You're able to see how many people are clicking the like button, engaging with you, your metrics from month to month to seeing how many people are, are what's going on month to month. And these are really important tools for you and your business to have. And if you are a marketing person or if you're a CEO or if you're just someone who's part of the firm who's really interested in the growth side of it, these are great tools to present to somebody where you could say, hey, you know, we've brought in hundred and something followers this month and they're all people from the industry and then you analyze those people and then you figure out from there who it is you really want to target and so these are all great ways where you again can just measure all the effectiveness of the organic growth that we had just spoke about so i'm going to wrap it up in just a minute today because i also just want to share one more thing is that Obviously during now these times, these times are unprecedented and we don't exactly know what's happening, but we do know that there's a lot of people who are unemployed. So if now is the time for you to be looking for new qualified candidates, um, I absolutely think LinkedIn is a terrific resource for you to be searching for, for the right um, talent for your organization you could actually run a job description, a paid job description. So LinkedIn does not allow you to run jobs for free. You can post it for free. So you could just share it as a regular post that your firm is looking for talented employees. And if anyone knows anyone, because again, it's all about your connections and who your connections know. But if you're looking to take more of to an in-dive route, then you're gonna to wanna to go to your job tab up at the top of the screen, and you're gonna to want to start an actual job post and paying for that on a monthly basis, which I am going to get into in my next uh, presentation in LinkedIn 102. So we're gonna be talking more about the paid and which ways to reach through paid advertising and paid job postings. But for today, I really wanted to focus on organic growth with you guys. So wrapping it up for today, I just wanted to reiterate your organic strategy for success on LinkedIn. And especially during these times, please take advantage when there are more people online than ever before. There are more people that are on LinkedIn, social media, creating videos than there ever has been. And this is the time to really start taking advantage and diving into all of it. So you're starting off, you are defining your audience and you are setting your goals and you are making sure that you have the right mindset and you're going after the right people. Then you are creating your business page. If you have not done so already, you're gonna create that page with all the essentials that are gonna go into it to unlock your features. And if you want, you could also um, just tweak it up right now. If you haven't been on there a while, just take a double check on the back end. See if you have those hashtags. See if you have those, those 20 keywords that you were able to include because you might not have had them before. So definitely take a look. Um, then you're going to go out there and you're going to attract that crowd with this beautiful business page you've created. And you're going to attract that audience with really, really high quality content filled with strategic hashtags. And those are all going to push your content out to the audience, which is going to attract them into you. And then your last and final step of your organic growth is to schmooze your audience. That is my biggest thing. I think that if you are really looking for a, a grassroots marketing technique and you really want to, I suggest schmoozing your audience 
and making the right steps to go out there and finding the people that you would like to work with and just make them feel good. If you make people feel good, they would, they like to work with you. They, people want to work with people that make them feel good. So I think that's really important to take away today. And that's all about sharing their content, sharing their articles, mentioning them in your content and mentioning them in your articles. And people love that. And then you could from there take it and really form some very strong relationships. And then your teamwork. It's important that you have your team on board with you. If you do not have a team, that's okay. If you're an independent, then you're going to just, again, work with your personal and your company profile. And that's okay too. But if you do have that team, encourage them. Give them excitement as to why they should be involved with the whole company's culture and page that you've now just built and represented. And then last is that you're going to use your statistics. You are absolutely going to go in there at the end of all of this and track what you've done. If you see that you're going up and up, you get more followers of the right people, then you're doing wonderful things. If you've noticed that you're not doing enough, it's time to just reanalyze then that marketing plan and figure out what steps you need to take to maybe bring in better results. So that has summarized today for my organic steps to growing your strategy to LinkedIn 101 and how to bring in business. So again, LinkedIn 102 will be more in depth with the technical side and advertising, but today is just really about organic and getting back out there, especially during these really difficult times. So again, thank you Miller Business Resource Center for having me. And I am here to answer any questions that you guys have for me. Of course, thank you. Uh, Marissa for the wonderful uh, presentation um, does does anybody um, have some questions I see Joan Dickinson um, from Stony Brook hello Joan um, she asks uh, what happens to the business page if you leave the position if it's tied to your personal page okay you could hear me right Alex I'm still on. yes yeah you're still on. you're good hmm. So that's a wonderful question and it's important. And this again is why your business page, it's best if it's connected to multiple admins. So in your settings of your business page, you would go to your page roles and you are able to add additional admins to that site. So if you are leaving the firm and you know that you don't want to be an admin of the page anymore, make sure that someone else in your company has that admin role, and then you are able to actually just remove yourself. But there has to just be one other person that's an admin on there, and then you could choose to remove yourself from that page. But it's in your settings in the page roles, and again, just make sure that someone else in your firm has control of that, because I have seen that become a major nightmare for certain companies. Yes, that is definitely uh, important. I can second that. You definitely want to have uh, more than one person um, on there. Um, we have some. Um, I did lose uh, a lot of the chat when because I did get kicked off. So I I can only see um, what's been uh, typed um, in the last couple minutes here. So people are saying thank you. They're saying it was very informative. Um, um, uh, Lenore, my friend, our good friend Lenore, any advice for multiple business pages? She is a consultant with two other businesses besides her own. Um, she's constantly asking her LinkedIn network to follow her other page and she also needs to get physicians and do not have them in her network so um if do you have any suggestions for uh our good friend lenore hi lenore well <laughs> lenore um so if you are running multiple business pages as i do because i run into this a lot you again if you want connections the right people i'd imagine that your multiple business pages they're not um the same type of business they're probably separate types of businesses and in different industries i'm just going to assume if i'm wrong lenore stop me but 
if they are different types of industries, then your personal page, you want to start connecting to the people that are relevant to those each individual business pages. And then in each individual page, if you're the admin of each account, you're now able to invite those people to follow that page. So you personally are going to need to connect to the right people on your personal page and then invite them into your, your business pages that are relevant to those pages. So that was definitely one suggestion. And then, like I said, it would be definitely putting out the right content to reach those people and start figuring out who it is that you want to reach. But I would definitely start with your personal page, connecting to the right audience of all of those three different businesses. Yeah, definitely agree with that. Um, yeah, she, Eleanor said two financial planning, but only, but one only works with physicians. Okay. So if one only works with physicians and she needs to bring in more physicians, I would suggest connecting to more physicians on LinkedIn and finding those people through LinkedIn and then inviting them to follow that page that's just geared to the physician. So again, Lenore, if you want to shoot me an email after and like, I'll be happy to talk to you about some of your um, specific questions to help you kind of manage those three or four different company pages and like give you some advice on how you could help bring in more to each one of those pages. I was going to say, Lenore, maybe we can, the Miller Center can help you with a list of uh, specific physicians that you're looking for. Yeah. I don't I don't know, just throwing it well, out that's there. Thing, Alex, like you could generate a list and then she could go through that list and start connecting with each one of those people and yeah, then inviting them to follow that specific page. Love the idea. Uh, yes. As do I, as do I. Um, anyone else? Um, we still have uh, some time here. Does anybody else, would anybody else like to um ask any questions comments suggestions anything um sal is reminding us today's webinar will be posted on our youtube channel um http uh, colon um, slash slash millerbusiness.tv so if you needed to go go back um, and and wanted to see something, um, you know, if you took a note down and you forgot, oh, let me finish that thought. Um, it will be um, posted up later today on uh, MillerBusinessCenter.tv. Um, Joan Dickinson writes: There are so many social media channels to keep current. Is LinkedIn the best one to put energy into over the others for business? I love this question, and I think Marissa. Yeah, that's a great question, and I yeah. do love this question too. So it's really, I don't know what business you're representing, but it's really all about which industry that you're in. So I have represented restaurants, and I've represented civil engineering firms. When it comes to a service base, typically, or something more on the design professional engineering side, I have done phenomenal on LinkedIn. I think you, without a doubt, always, always need LinkedIn. And you're going to see as you go which social media platforms work best for you and what does not. So it's really kind of a trial and error process. So I could tell you firsthand that as an engine, as one of the, at my engineering firm, Facebook does not even come close to what we could do on LinkedIn because Facebook, unfortunately, no one really cares to see what an engineer is doing on Facebook. <laughs> However, if you're selling craft beer, you're going to do phenomenal on Facebook and you might not do as well on LinkedIn. So it kind of is just like depending on the industry specific, but it's, it's trial and error and understanding, but without a doubt, have the presence in all of them if you're able to maintain all of them. Don't just start a platform and then of course not continue with it. But if you can maintain all of them, then definitely run everything on the platforms, on all of them. But you'll see which one works best for you. 
Okay, well, with that, I'm going to say um, thank you, Marissa, for another wonderful presentation. Thank you for coming to uh, the the Miller Center virtually and, and presenting uh, LinkedIn 101. And we know we'll have you back for 102. So all of you, please keep your eyes, eyes out for that. And, um, you know, Great yes. job, Marissa. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you, so you again. Alex. Thank you guys for having me, and I'll leave my contact info with Alex if anyone has a question or would like to get in touch with me.